Welcome to the second part of the history of medicine. We're going to talk about the Renaissance period through the 19th century. We left off talking about the Middle Ages and how the medical practices of the Greeks and Romans were renewed. And this is continued on through the Renaissance period. During the Renaissance period, this is truly the rebirth of the science of medicine. The dissection of the human body began to allow a better understanding of the anatomy and physiology. The artists Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci used dissection in order to draw the human body more realistically. So not only do they do very beautiful drawings of like the Mona Lisa, Sixteenth Chapel, they use their skill to draw the body in a more realistic fashion. Also, the development of the printing press allowed the knowledge to be spread to others. They started mass quantity printing of books, and that way people were able to get more knowledge and become more knowledgeable about how to prevent the spread of diseases and how to stay healthy. The first chairs or positions of authority of medicine were created at Oxford and Cambridge in England in 1440. Cambridge and Oxford are very prestigious universities in England. The first anatomy book was published by Andres Versalius, and then also the first book on dietetics was written by Isaac Judeus. Dietetics is a study of the way the body functions with food, or how the food functions in the body to help support life. The average lifespan for the Renaissance period was about 30 to 40 years. Moving on to the 16th and 17th centuries, the cause of diseases were still not known and many people died from infection and puerperal child fever, childbirth fever. Puerperal fever is due to the unsanitary conditions that were used and practiced during that time. Women, when they gave birth, would get very sick, they'd get puerperal fever due to infection and many of them often died. Apothecaries or early pharmacists made and prescribed and sold medications. They were the first to actually kind of start the whole pharmacy movement. Ambrose Pear. He is a French surgeon who became known as the father of modern surgery. Think of pear, pear knife, you cut a pear to eat it. Think of surgery, you cut things during surgery normally. Ambrose Pear is known as the father of modern surgery. He established the use of ligatures to bind arteries and stop bleedings. This also allowed the elimination of the using of boiling oil to cauterize the wounds. What they would do is they would boil this oil to get it super hot. If there was massive bleeding, they would pour this boiling oil over it to stop the bleeding. Once again, goes back to the how they use very unsanitary conditions. He also improved the treatment for fractures and, proved, uh, and promoted the use of artificial limbs. Anton von Leeuwenhoek, you can thank him for biology because he invented the microscope in 1666. Without the microscope, we would not be able to see all the little bitty microscopic organisms that are causing these diseases and illnesses. Average lifespan of the 16th and 17th centuries, about 35 to 40 years. 18th century, lots of important people. Mr. Gabriel Fahrenheit created the first mercury thermometer in 1714. Yes, that is where we get the measurement Fahrenheit from, from Mr. Gabriel who created it, who created the first mercury thermometer. John Hunter, he was an English surgeon who established scientific surgical procedures. He established the basically what was to become the norm for the different surgical procedures so that everyone could get on the same page and all perform the same procedures and everyone would know how to do it step by step. Benjamin Franklin invented the bifocals for all of us blind people. He helped us see and, and, and basically improve quality of life for those that have vision issues. James Lind prescribed lime juice containing vitamin C to prevent scurvy in 1795. This was actually considered a very highly regarded military secret back in the 1790s because um, in submarines, one of the biggest problems they would face is scurvy. Scurvy is something you get whenever you don't get the sunlight. You get, don't get exposed to sunlight very often. So if you can imagine being underneath the water in the submarines, this would be a big issue by taking lime juice has helped prevent scurvy, allowed the submarines to stay underwater longer and complete more important missions. 
Edward uh, Jenner developed the vaccination for smallpox in 1796 to help eradicate this very, very devastating disease. Average life expectancy, 40 to 50 years. 19th century, James Blundell performed the first blood transfusion in 1818. They realized the importance of needing blood. If you lose too much blood, you die. So they learned if they, would, they could transfuse blood from one person to another. Then we have Mr. René Lenec. He invented the first stethoscope in 1819. Think about the stethoscope. Where does it go? Around your neck. Lenec, Mr. René Lenec, invented the stethoscope to go around Lenec. 19th century, another important person is Miss Florence Nightingale. She was the founder of modern nursing. She established efficient and sanitary nursing units during the Crimean War in 1854. This was a war in which the British government was highly criticized for their unsanitary practices for the soldiers whenever they were injured. So they brought in Florence Nightingale and her, a crew of her nurses in, and at first they were not highly accepted because they are females coming into a predominantly male society but once they brought them in they had high numbers of casualties and they started to realize that her sanitary and efficient units would help l allow the soldiers to live longer they began to become more and more accepted she opened the nightingale school and home for the nurses in st thomas hospital in london in 1860 so she began the professional education of nurses very big step for women during this time Mr. Ignaz Simmelweis in the 1840s encouraged physicians to wash hands with lime after performing autopsies and before delivering babies to prevent puerperal childbirth fever again. This idea was resisted by hospitals and medical personnel at first because what he was saying was basically that the doctors were the ones creating the puerperal fever by spreading the infection. So once again, physicians during that day were regarded as very clean and gentleman like so for someone to come in and say that they were the ones causing the diseases and the fevers and the puerperal fevers that was unheard of then we have elizabeth blackwell she became the very first female physician in the u.s in 1849 we have joseph joseph lister started using disinfectants and antiseptics during surgery to prevent infection in 1865 again learning that it is the cleanliness that helps keep people alive and helps prevent these infections and that is where we do get the term the word Listerine is from Mr. Lister. We have Clara Barton she founded the American Red Cross in 1881 and then the International Red Cross was founded in 1863. Louis Pasteur he contributed many discoveries to the practice of medicine. He proved that microorganisms cause diseases. Thank you to uh, Mr. Anton, Anton von Leeuwenhoek for inventing the microscope so we can see these. And then he also pasteurized milk to kill bacteria. Once again, pasture came from his name, pasteurized. That's where we get the name pasture from. So they used that method to kill the bacteria in milk. And he also created a vaccine for rabies in 1885. Next we have Mr. Dmitry Ivanfosky. He discovered viruses in 1892. And then Gregory Mendel, he established the principles of hereditary and dominance recessive patterns. Wilhelm Rontgen discovered the Rontgen genograms, x-rays in 1895. This is where we get x-rays. He figured out by doing, by doing the Rontgen genograms, you can take a picture and see the structures of the bones. Amroth Wright developed the vaccines for the typhoid fever in 1897. Average lifespan for the 19th century, 40 to 60 years. Kind of an overview of the 1960s, sorry, 19th century. The Industrial Revolution took place, resulting in major progress in the medical science. They had ready access to books, thanks to the printing press, development of machines, formal training for nurses, thank you, Ms. Florence Nightingale, infection control, Mr. Lister kind of helped with that, so did Ignaz Simmelweis. Women became more active participants in medicine. Again, Florence Nightingale, she started all the nursing. Treatments became more specific as causes of diseases were identified. This is very important for the treatment of illnesses and diseases. This does conclude the end of our second video of the history of medicine.